In the 21st century, you cannot afford not to share your knowledge. And on Anchor, everyone gets a platform. Build yours today with the free podcast creator accessible from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. Earn money with no minimum listenership. Anchor is all you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm to get started. Build your platform today. You are listening to the Royal Bride Godmother Podcast, the podcast that's dedicated to serving you with a healthy dose of hot coals and sweet bread rolls to help you get out of that still religion and into the higher places with the spirit. So it's time to get out of that valley of dry bones. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good, good everything. I pray that you are doing Excellent as the cedars, all of you lovely, wonderful listeners joining me from the north, east, west, and south. Hallelujah. Praise God for each and every one of you. So, are we ready to continue our discussion on the toxic abuse of a narcissist, those trauma bonds, and that inter- intermittent reinforcement, because I sure am. You know, we are not going to be talking about this from the psychology perspective. There's so much that has been touched on that already, and I, I, I feel like not enough is talked, not enough is said about the spiritual aspect of this kind of abuse, is this kind of toxic, uh, these soul ties that form. So, without further ado, I am Rima Grace, Minister, Etiquette Coach and Consultant, and Life Coach specialized in faith, narcissistic abuse, self-love, self-growth, femininity, and self-empowerment. And I praise God for each and every one of you tuning in. So, welcome to our series, The Narcissist and Your Spirit. And as I said, today's episode will deal with the trauma bond, intermittent reinforcement. We will briefly go through all of that, and we will also discuss... A little more about um, something that I, I, I wasn't planning on talking about, but the Holy Spirit, He's the one who plans, and He's the one who speaks. So we are going to be touching on the devious, diabolical, and sadistic sexual appetites of the narcissist, highly highly important to speak of it. Like I said, it isn't something that I was going to touch on, but we are, we are, we are going to be transparent. This is a very transparent podcast episode only because there is so many of you, the Lord says, dealing with narcissistic abuse at this very moment, wherever you find yourselves and So let's talk a little bit about the trauma bond. The trauma bond, as psychologists have described it, is what is occurring inside of abusive relationships that is difficult to detect from within the relationship. So essentially, it is an addiction where the abused person feels the need to have more validation from their abuser, which allows the abuser to control and have more power and more manipulation over the mind of the of the person who is being abused. Now, it can often take months or even years for the abused, the victim, to realize they are even in this kind of relationship. And I pray that for, as we are talking about this, we are talking only weeks or months, not years. Life is too short to spend it caught up to waste it caught up in in the, the the webs of an abuser. Now, how does this occur? It is an alternation of abuse and positive experiences which confuse the victim. You know, as so as time goes on, the tra- that trauma bond will strengthen because of this intermittent reinforcement that 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 alternation of abuse and positive experiences. The trauma bond strengthens and now the person who's being abused will grow more conditioned and and they will grow they grow used to the abuse because of these alternations. Now I want to delve into as we're talk as we're talking about trauma bonds, I want to delve into something something um which 
needs to be talked about. And I already talked about it in, in a previous video I did for YouTube. But because I haven't talked about it in the podcast, let's let's touch this this let's let's touch this topic. It is about the glamorization, the glorification of toxic abuse of of not not just MPD. We're not going to narrow it down to MPD. It's just toxic soul ties in general. And um, trauma bonds, and they're glamorized. Hollywood will glorify them. Uh, romance novels will glorify s- of certain characters that are very abusive. Maybe you can already think of some off the top of your head. I have a specific example that I want to explore because this is one that really stayed with me. Uh, you, you know, we, we have we have. Um, we have a, a lot of romance novels, <laughs> and especially a, a, a well, not so recent one anymore. But the Fifty Shades of Grey was definitely one where you could see trauma bond happening between the protagonists. Um, but let's go into a, a story where some of you may not really think there is a toxic abuse and trauma bond occurring. And this is in The Tale is All This Time. That one, yes, yes, is exactly the one you're thinking. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast, La Bella y la Bestia, La Bella y la Bestia, all in any shape, form, version that you present this story to me. There, I will say, and I believe that this story is all about abuse. It really is. I mean, come on. I watched that Disney film. Really watch it without suspending your disbelief and put away your preconceived notions of romance and, and, and relationships and love and really look at that. Just watch how that beast um, reacts to Belle and, and come on, go ahead and starve. Really? Really, guy? We're going to go there. Okay. Okay. And and keep in mind, he is young. I think he's only like 21 years old. So um, when he's trapped in the, in, in the body of a beast, I could be wrong. What's his name? Adam? I think his name is Adam. All right. But we're going to go into a version that was made. I believe it was in 2015. It's an, an international version uh, with uh, uh, um, uh, Italian actor Alessandro Preziosi and uh, Spanish actress Blanca Suarez. And this is, this is one's called La Bella y la Bestia. Now, everything is typical about this story. You have the story of the prince who is uh, cursed. And in this case, he is... He's cursed by life. He's, he, he goes through a traumatic experience and he, he throws himself into, um, drug, drug addiction and throws himself into just having pity parties for himself and, and womanizing really until he meets Belle, um, in the form of Blanca Suarez. And, uh, well, really he's, he, he doesn't fall in love with her right off the bat. He, there's a, a, a bet that ensues between him and a, a cousin that's completely obsessed with him and wants to have him at all costs. And, and so it's kind of like, le, um, dangerous liaisons, um, where they make a bet and it, it is a very wicked bet. I'll leave it up to you if you want to watch this film, <laughs> but, um, but the point is that the whole gist of the bet is to bed Bella, to dishonor her. And so the prince has a certain amount of time to do it. I believe it's only three weeks. And I mentioned the specific timing because in this timing is how the relationship develops. This is what it takes, three weeks. Now, what we see in the story is, you know, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're just focusing on the relationship between those two as it begins to unfold, you start to see a lot of abuse, the verbal abuse, emotional abuse, and then there's intermittent reinforcement. He does gallant things for her father. Um, he, he, he misbehaves and he behaves. He's that, he's that quintessential bad boy type, a uh, Byronic type, the, like, uh, like, uh, like a more, um, kind of like Rochester and Jane Eyre, except this guy, he ups the ante with the abuse and, and the, and the yelling and the cursing and the, and the drug addiction. <clears throat> but what I noticed about the film 
is how Bella will, she will leave and she will, she comes back. She leaves and she comes back. She leaves and she comes back. I think she does that about three, three times. I could be wrong. She does it several times. And of course, there's reasons for it. There's, there's reasons for it, for her leaving and then coming back. But the point is, she does it. Now, going back, going back to what happens in trauma bond and intermittent reinforcement, that is when you want to leave a toxic situation, toxic relationship. And keep in mind, this isn't just talking about romantic situations. This is also about family situations. It could be with a coworker. It could be with, uh, with friends even. There are some very toxic friends out there. So, what I noticed, the pattern I noticed is that uh, the prince does something, does something, and uh, and then she, or he, he he does something towards the middle, and I won't give, and I will not give it away, but this makes her feel indebted to him. And what I noticed was we're we're going to go into the risk, the common risk factors of trauma bonding, and but we're going to let's first cover, um, let's first cover. Some of these, uh, um, the signs that we need to look out for. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. And off the, off the bat, off the bat, one of the very first signs is feeling indebted to the abuser. The person who's being abused will be made to feel like they owe something to the abuser. And this could be, this could be anything really. It, it, you, you know, you, you feel like you are indebted in some way, form or another. And this causes the person to feel bad um, for not making up for the indebtedness. And that's the first thing that I noticed in the film, that she feels indebted to him. Now, another sign is protecting the abuser. Now, some of you may have, may remember or may have a friend who is caught in some kind of toxic relationship and you hear, you hear the talk that they, they, they cover for the abuser. They cover for, they protect the abuser. They say, no, but he was angry. Uh, it, it, you know, it was, he had a bad day at work or, you know, it, he was, he was depressed that time. They make excuses or, hey, it could be a man making excuses for a woman. But typically this occurs more with women, um, saying this about men really as it as it happened to me protecting that abuser and sometimes you know ladies that abuser will have serious mental health issues and you can't help him out of it he needs therapy he needs counseling he needs he needs a psychologist and we're not the ones ladies we are not the ones and you know what occurs here when you protect your abuser is that that abused the abused individual will often go against the people who are trying to warn you against your abuser telling you you know what i don't like the way he treats you i don't want i don't like the way that he speaks to you and there we are trying to cover up for him, trying to make up all these excuses. That is a serious sign right there. Next up is covering negative emotions. Oh boy, I can remember this one happening to me. Negative emotions, right, that are prevalent in people who are being abused, but you don't want anybody to notice these emotions. So you put on, basically what you do is the, your clown face. You put on, you, you're, you're feeling miserable on the inside. You slap on your coats of makeup, you slap on that fake smile, and you don't want anybody to notice that you are being abused. You know what I mean? This is like uh, putting on the sunglasses when you have a black guy, when that guy has beat you, you know, and, and you, um, you especially don't want that, uh, the abuser to notice your emotions because there is a threat here that the abuser will often play the victim. Now, in my case, I'm going to give, per I can only speak from personal experience and what, 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 what occurred to me was when I, when I did not disguise my negative emotions, my abuser would play the victim and he would, um, well, I, I, I just, I, I will have to create a, uh, a video talking about all of my experience in, because I gave it, I gave it away in Spanish already on a Facebook live about a week ago, but, um, yes, I do need to create an, an English an English version of this and just talk about my experience. Um, we all need to share our stories, don't we? So, essentially, what it, what, what was happening here is that I I did something pretty I did something pretty crazy for him that I never thought that I would do for somebody. And when it, the results didn't turn out the way that I wanted them to, he made it seem like it was all my fault, and he made it seem like uh, if I didn't stop sulking um, because I didn't get what I wanted out of the situation and out of the 
the craziness that that I that I went through, that the hoops that I that I jumped through, that he would stop speaking to me forever. That he would just that because because my negative emotions were so unpleasant to him that he was threatening me that he would just stop speaking to me and he would pretty much just drop me. And so he did that. He did that a few times in in covert ways because I believe this person was more of a covert narcissist. So they make you feel guilty for how they feel. I mean, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, no, they, they make you feel guilty. Yes. So, um, you know, if you find yourself, uh, hiding these negative emotions, it's a very, it's a very possible sign that you are experiencing the trauma bond because if you're only letting them out when you're alone, when you're bottling up all these negative emotions and you're not telling, talk, you're not talking to anybody. Oh honey, it's going to come out one way or another. So watch out for that when you're bottling those negative emotions. Another sign is, another telltale sign is friends and family are not supportive of your relationship. In my case, this was all very, I had to hide my, my friendship and my, and my, and my toxic situationship from my friends and my family. There came a point where I couldn't even talk to the people who were closest to me because I was de- feeling deeply shamed about the things that I was allowing this person to put me through. And I didn't want to hear it from them. I did not want to hear them saying to me, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be talking to him anymore. You should nothing, just cut him off. So what, what's important to realize here is that they see what you cannot. Remember, we talked about trauma bond being something, the abuse that's occurring within the relationship. You are blinded to the conditioning. You are blinded to the manipulation. You are blinded to everything toxic going on because you are stirring, you are marinating in this dark in, in this dark, in this, uh, in, in the black goo, let's call it the black goo. You are stewing in the black goo. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what it is. So you are blinded. You cannot see it's <laughs> for some reason. I, when I think black goo, I'm reminded of that one scene in Jurassic Park where, uh, the main, the main villain, the guy who shuts down all the, who shuts off all the electricity on the gates, the power. I hope you guys, you guys realize who I'm talking. You know, if you've seen this movie, epic movie, by the way, I recommend it. Um, but he ends up uh, getting his own one of the dinosaurs. I'm not going to give it away, but yeah, I, I think I just gave it away. <laughs> anyway, classic film. So he gets into the car and th- yeah, th- he gets his own. But what I noticed about that when I when I'm talking about black goo, that dinosaur has a black goo that he uses to blind his victims before he he completely devours them. And I just gave it away. Um, But, you know, the more I think about it, the more I, 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 I feel that this is what the narcissistic, uh, the narcissistic person does. They, they throw this black goo on you. And I'm also reminded of that one scene in the X-Files movie where the little boy falls into the, the hole and there are, there's this black, like, uh, it's like, it looks like oil, uh, but it really, it's alien. It's alien. It's some kind of alien thing, and it starts to crawl on him, and then it takes com- it, it takes him over completely, and the first thing you see are his eyes turn black. And, and, and I did use that as one of my thumbnails for my YouTube videos because I, I, always, I always thought of those things as I was caught up in this toxic uh, enmeshment, and we will talk about enmeshment in further podcasts. This is, is going to be a, an interesting series. I'm just going by how the Holy Spirit reveals these things to me. So... Let's go back to this telltale sign. When friends and family are not supporting your relationship, red flag, a red flag. They're not doing it to ruin your life. They see something you cannot because you're stewing in the black goo. So it's one thing if you have parents um, who feel like no one deserves you, right? Oh, my, my, my baby, no one deserves you. You're just so good. They put you on the pedestal. Okay. Okay. That's one thing. <laughs> but it's an entirely different thing when everybody's going out of the way to tell you when your friends, when your family, even people who don't like you, honey, they're, they're, they're going out of their way. They notice a change in you that you, uh, you do not perceive. You do not see it in yourself. They know that you're, you're, you're in something that's not to your benefit. It's not to your well being. So they're trying to be protective. And, but you know what the thing is? You're likely to feel protective over your abuser and over the situation. Why? Because you have already been trauma bonded. Combination of positive experiences with abuse from your abuser. So let's go into the next sign, playing multiple roles for the abuser. 
Ooh, I was there. Ooh, I was there. So, um, your abuser, you're wearing several hats for your abuser. You're the counselor. You're the life coach. You are the side chick. You're the side boy. You are the babysitter, the mother, the teacher, the therapist. You're everything. You're the editor. I was the editor. <laughs> I was the, well, I was, I was the B, I was the beta reader. And so, uh, (laughs) and so you're playing multiple roles for your abuser. I mean, really think about that. That's a lot of stress thrown on you. Then by taking on all these roles, you know what's occurring is to your identity is weakening and you're developing an even stronger trauma bond. And this causes you to feel even more indebted to your abuser because you're wearing the several hats. So how many you're wearing? You're the chef, you're the friend, you're the side chick, the whatever you are. But there you are. You're taking on all these identities. And you know what's interesting about this? And I spoke about the T-1000 in Terminator. I think it was in several podcasts uh, when we talked about, when we started touching on the narcissist series. But really, really what narcissists do is they do T-1000 you. They find out exactly what kind of man or woman that you want. So they can, they, you give them that blueprint. They, they, they trick you into giving them the blueprint so they can transform into that. But but interestingly enough, you also become a T-1000 to them. You turn into all of these different types. You, you start performing all these roles for them. You're role-playing the entire time, the entire time. Um, it, yeah, I, I, it's, I know, it's, the more I think about it, the, the creepier, the creepier it is. There was a point where I was, I was the side chick, but I was also expected to be the friend. And I was trauma bonded to be, to be, to be both. And when he wanted a side chick, he would get side chick. And when he wanted friend, he would force me to be his friend only. Um, and, and you know, like I said, we don't fall in love with them. Praise God. Um, that's why we, we don't, we don't, we were able to walk away from it. We're able to walk away from it. And I pray that uh, those of you who are listening to me right now are really taking note. You're really writing this down. Use your blue pens. Please write these things down. Start planning your escapes. And I, it doesn't, like I said, it does not have to be with an NPD necessarily. It could be with toxic friends, coworkers, family, whatever it is. Whatever it is, your well being, your soul are precious. You need to protect your heart. Now, they will, uh, so that trauma bond is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger the more roles you play out for them. Now, let's talk about some of the signs. Let's talk about some of these signs. Um, and like I said, this is only touching on trauma bond and intermittent reinforcement. I, I do want to go delve deeper. There's, it's, it's fascinating. It's twisted and it must be talked about because it is convoluted. It really is. It's complicated. It is so intricate. Um, it, it's, it, but, Let's talk about these signs. Feeling stuck. Number one, feeling stuck. You feel like there's no way out. I really, you feel like there's no way out of the situation. Um, you feel like you are really trapped. Like no one's going to, and if you talk to anybody, no one's really going to, going to understand you because if they have not experienced it, they cannot understand you. Hard as they may try, they cannot. They think this is just a situation where you can up and leave and you can't. You feel that you can't. You completely feel stuck. You're in quicksand. Now, number two, walking on eggshells. So you are afraid to set them off. You are walking. There, there are grenades everywhere. You're walking on those eggshells. You are afraid to set them off with something you'll do or say because whatever you do or say that displeases them, you will be punished for it. They, they have, they have punishments. They, they, they have punishments for different little things that you do. It could be by, uh, belittling you. It, it could be something small like that, right? Not small. I mean, didn't, did not mean to say that because nothing that occurs in these situations is small and insignificant. So let's not minimize it. So let me correct myself. The, the, the mild things that start off of mildly. And that's why you don't realize that you are being trauma bonded because When you're walking on the eggshells and when you step on a grenade, what happens is, and you set them off, they will insult you. They will call you uh, by the, those, by those four lettered words that they really like. They really enjoy the four lettered words, the five lettered words. 
And you know which ones I'm talking about, ladies. We're not going to. We're not even going to mention them here. This is a holy podcast. But um, another thing that they will do, they, they will begin to triangulate you. Now, we, we uh, the triangulation, it can be by bringing in third parties. And, and there are different ways that they triangulate you. And, and in my case, uh, there was always somebody, there was always an understudy waiting in the wings. Um, you know, because you're grade eight supply. Your grade AAA supply, but they have understudies waiting. The appliances, the ones who are going to replace you, and they make you feel like they will replace you anytime soon. So that's why you're walking on eggshells because you feel that all you have to do is just walk lightly and not step on those grenades and you'll be fine and everything will work out between you. I got news for you. It does not. They still, they're, 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 there comes a point where they get so bored because you're not giving them enough supply that they will begin to provoke you. All right. So number three, fearing that your abuser will hurt themselves if you leave. Yes. Yes. Um, in my experience, the person tried to commit suicide. Now, I don't know how true, how, how, how deeply he went, the extent to where, to, to the point where he went to try and commit suicide. But the point is, he told me about it. So, when a person's trying to commit suicide, of course, if you leave them. Now, I don't think, I don't think he's definitely hasn't committed suicide because he keeps, uh, he keeps, uh, he, he had kept trying to contact me. Um, but, uh, you are, the point is you're, you're hanging by a thread, a very fine thread at that, that you believe your abuser will hurt himself if you leave. So just the idea of, of feeling that is already torturing you and will not allow you to leave at all. All right. Number four, the fourth sign when people are telling you, get out, get out. They, like they told me, this person, you can lose your life. This person can kill you and not kill you like, you know, a serial killer would, a murderer would, but, but kill you slowly but surely. And, and it all, like I said, it all begins in the spirit, ladies. It all starts in the soul, ladies. And then what, what occurs within you begins to manifest on the outside. So it's so important that when people are telling you to get out, start paying attention because trauma bond is something you do not perceive. You do not perceive that you are being bonded to this person through the abuse and through the positive intermittent reinforcement. All right, number five sign. As soon as you do leave, you begin to pine for them. Like if this was Romeo and Juliet, oh yes, you do begin to pine for them. You begin, you feel a strong sense of longing for them. You absolutely do. I experienced it many, many times. And that's what causes you to go back for more abuse and they have prepared more abuse for you they sure have because the moment that you leave oh that sets them off that sets them off and when they and they know that you'll come back they have prepared a fine banquet of abuse for you do you hear me so very important to heed these signs take note take note number six the abuser punishes you when you do something they consider wrong, let's underline that. When you do something they consider wrong. It's not wrong. They consider it wrong. Now, narcissists, whatever, whatever kind of narcissist they are, grandiose, covert, overt, whatever they are, the malignant ones, whatever narcissist they are, they, if they consider it wrong, they consider it wrong. I'm reminded of the film Sleeping with the Enemy with Julia Roberts. That film really, I think that, that film really, um, um, it nails it down when it comes to what they consider wrong. If you, if you ladies have seen this film, she is trauma bonded and she's so traumatized that everything has to be in order because that is the way that Mr. Narcissist wanted it, right? They, she had, they had the perfect house by the beach and the idyllic setting, but what was going on inside that gilded cage is a horror story, is a horror story. And this happens, this happens more than we would like to realize it, more than we would like to acknowledge it. You know, a lot of times you see people who look, you could be, you go on your Instagram, go on your Facebook, not everything you see is is what's being told in those pictures, all right? So in this film, 
In this film, uh, she, Julia Roberts' character, she is Laura. I believe her name is Laura. Yes. She's, uh, she's the trophy wife. She's beautiful. She, she, she's got it all. Physically, she's got it all. And really, she has a beautiful heart too. And, um, but she's married to this, uh, <laughs> he's an extremely wealthy, good looking man. Um, he, I mean, but he's insane. He's absolutely insane. He's a flat out malignant narcissist. And uh, malignant or grandiose, the point is he's got her trauma bonded. Now, um, every it's 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 all what he it's his way or the highway, um, or bruises, bruises, just nothing but bruises and broken ribs and things. Remind, reminded of the movie Enough with J- Jennifer Lopez. Anyway, so uh, Julia Roberts' character. She's so trauma bonded, very traumatized. Everything has to be in order. I'm talking about like the cap, the cabinets, the way that he has them arranged, the, 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 the bath towels, the kitchen towels, everything is organization. And if something is out of place, she gets it. He gives it to her. He disciplines her. He, uh, he punishes her. He abuses her. He really does this. And I'm reminded of something that I read recently. It, it, uh, there's something that I read that, you know, I, I think I ought to, I think I ought to share it with you. Um, only because it, and, uh, it's, I'm, I'm being told to share this with you. Um, I read this in an article. And so let's, I'm just, I'm just going to give it to you straight as I found it because I don't want to miss a bit, a, a beat here. Um, Okay, it says even strong people can be trained to submit by the right combination of praise and punishment. Really, really, even strong people, they can be trained. This is why I said it doesn't matter where you, what level you are in life. It doesn't matter how strong and confident you are. When you meet the person who, the narcissist, who can break you down, they will break you down Because even if you are strong, you can be trained to submit, as it says in this article. Now, I want to read this full. um, It's not not too long, but I, I want to read it. It says, I once had a German shepherd dog that would not stop biting people. I tried everything that the books recommended to break her of the habit. Nothing worked. She was a really big, strong dog, and I was afraid that she would hurt somebody seriously and would have to be put down. In desperation, I hired an animal psychologist. He said, don't worry, I can cure her in less than 10 minutes. I brought her over to him. He bent down and put his face near hers while I held her leash. She lunged to bite him. Before she could get her teeth into him, he punched her in the side of her head. Then he quickly petted her and said, Good doggy, good doggy. She gave him an evil look and went for him. He punched her again, petted her and said, Good doggy. Good doggy. She paused and looked at him, and I could see the wheels turning in her head. She sat down in front of him and never bit anyone again. I said, I hate that you had to hit her, but at least that I understand. What I don't understand is the good doggy, good doggy part. He said to me, the punch was to stop her from biting me and to make her think. The good doggy, good doggy, was to reward her for not biting me. Excellent, excellent example of what these sick and twisted, in, toxic individuals do to us. Even strong people can be trained to submit by the right combination of praise and punishment. Throw that into your arsenals. Throw that into your um, your tool belts, ladies. Definitely. The more educated you are on this, on this topic, on all these subjects, the more power to you, ladies. More power to you. I praise God for each and every one of you for uh, tuning in, for coming in to listen again. 
like I said, this is just touching the tip of the iceberg. We have got to talk about this. We will be talking about it and further. Um, I will be uh, creating YouTube videos, Facebook lives, exploring this deeper, deeper, deeper. We have to get into the bottom part of that iceberg. Very important. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for staying towards the end. We will continue the discussions. We will continue speaking on enmeshment on our next episode, uh, touch uh, on the narcissist and your spirit series. We will, um, we will also be touching more on the glorification of that, the, the toxic glorification of the bad boy and the toxic soul ties. I'm talking about films like you wouldn't expect. I'm talking about films like The Notebook. I mean, we know there was definitely toxicity going on there, um, but Hollywood likes to glamorize it. Yes, Grease is another one. Grease, Sandy and uh, Sandy and um, and Danny. Danny didn't change much for her, but she had to change for him. And uh, turning into that vixen that she turned to towards the end, there's a reason that that scene is so uh, powerful. You're the, you're the one that I want, right? I, I know, I know, ladies, I know. But we have to look at this from the perspective of those of us who have already been abused. We have already been misused. We have already been mistreated. So when we look at these things, we're no longer looking at them through the rose-tinted glasses. We look at them as for what they really are, glorification and glamorization of toxic relationships. Do not glamorize the bad boy, all right? I know he's gorgeous. I know he He's alluring. I know. I know. And that's why he's bad. <laughs> All right. From James Dean to, to, to our most recent ones like Edward Cullen and Christian Grey and the Vampire Diaries. Uh, I believe his name is Damon. Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes, I know. And I was speaking to my, my, my niece who's 14 and we were taught, we were touching on this topic and she asks me, well, why are, why do we like them so much? She's a good girl. And why do we like them so much? Why do good girls like bad boys? And I said, because good girls and, 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 and this is just right off the bat. What came to me is good girls. We live a safe life. We live a safe and sheltered life. And when we meet the bad boy, that's where that, that, that's where that, uh, um, intermittent reinforcement starts. We, we get a taste of the, ed, the, the, the edge, right? The dark side. We, and that's, and that's exactly why we fall. We get trapped. And if you're codependent, that's, that just makes it even worse. So please stay tuned for the next part of the Narcissist and Your Spirit series. It's all happening over this week, uh, this uh, ending this week, over the weekend. Uh, there's lots coming in. There's lots coming in, as I mentioned in the previous, um, in, um, the previous podcast episode. We will continue the Shulamite series, absolutely. So I want to make sure, ladies, you are all tuned in, you're subscribed, you don't miss out on those on those heavy portions that are coming in. And I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to lead, really. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Every episode that I have uh, created so far, it's all it has all been for you. You know, God has so much to say to his daughters. And I mean, God is speaking. God is speaking. I pray that you are listening, ladies. If you haven't already done so, please share this podcast, share this episode, share the episode to somebody that, um, that you love, that you know may be going through this. Like I said, we're, we're, we're going to continue touching on the spiritual aspects. It was very important, though, to cover um, uh, what trauma bond means, the signs and those risk factors, the telltale signs. Very important. Please spread the word. Spread it around, spread it around. I'm so excited to have you all on board. I am Grace, your life coach, your spiritual godmother, your motivator. And I'm reminding you again, I'm offering those free life coaching services Mondays through Fridays, all on narcissistic abuse, currently mindset, faith, and empowerment. So you can feel free to book your free 60-minute session with me. And that's all in the link below. Don't forget, those conference calls are happening Tuesdays and Wednesdays, all at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Tuesdays are for English, Wednesdays in Spanish. Everything that you need to know is in the link in the description. Um, and subscribe to my monthly newsletter. I am be I'm launching a monthly newsletter beginning ju in June. 
It's very important to send out this newsletter. It will be focused on the Holy Ghost, and it is focused on Jesus Christ. It's very important to be getting. Ladies, let me tell you something. I know that reading the Word of the Lord can be, can be a daunting I don't, I don't ever want us to talk about it as a task because it is not a task to spend time with your heavenly father. I grew up in religion where I, it was all legalistic and I felt like I was tasked with, um, having to read the holy word. No, reading the Bible, it's going to give us the marrow in our bones, praise God, praise God, through prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, praise God. So what I, what I intend to do with this newsletter is to build you up more. I, these podcasts are, are, are we're, we're focusing on the Lord, but there's something about focusing on the word through, through word, through actual printed word. And it's very important to, to really talk about the power of the Holy Spirit in in your daily life. I'm talking about Catherine Kuhlman style. I mean, ladies, it was Catherine Kuhlman who said, I didn't do anything special. I, I, he's my best friend and just, I have him. You can have him. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. So I want you ladies and, and I, I want us all to continue growing as this podcast continues to grow as these episodes begin to get, um, del- delve deeper into talks about whatever it is the Holy Spirit wants to share. Uh, right now, Currently, it's all about narcissism. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't expect to go back to this, but he wants me to talk about it because so many of you are still going through it. Just reading the, the reading certain articles and and stories recently, just it, it really triggered the memories. It really triggered the memories, and and I realized, you know what, I went through this. The Lord says, you go through this so that you may you you, you may you may be able to relate to others who are going through it. Because like I said, very few people truly understand what it's like to be um, trauma bonded and abused and enmeshed with a narcissist. So please subscribe to my monthly newsletter, all starting in June. You can, you by, you can join my email list to do that. Um, the email, uh, when you, once you join my email, my mailing list, you will also receive your free copy of 37 powerful daily affirmations. Look, daily affirmations, you, you're so important to be commanding your day, ladies. I did, I, I did not know this. I did not grow up being told that I could command my day, that I could exercise dominion over my day. And praise God that I have learned to do it and I continue doing it. I ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen, strengthen, strengthen this courage and this power, ladies. So important. 37 powerful daily affirmations to command your day. So if you would like to receive your newsletter starting in June, you receive your free copy of those powerful daily affirmations, please join my mailing list. Um, Another reminder, this is all housekeeping, very important, very, very important, because this is all starting. <laughs> you can join the Goodly Iridescence group on Facebook. That's launching, uh, the first live video will be launching Friday, May 28th at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Lots of topics to be discussed in this Facebook, on these Facebook lives, on the Facebook group. Also in June, I'm launching that YouTube twice a month. Very, I mean, I wasn't thinking of doing this. The Holy Spirit just dropped it on me. Praise God. So there's more information on that in the description of this episode. I love you all so very much. I, I, I'm keeping you all in my daily prayers. You know I am. You know I am. Ladies, God is so good. Go to your Heavenly Father tonight. Thank Him. Thank Him for Jesus Christ. Thank Him for the Holy Ghost. Thank Him for the breath of life. You woke up today. Your, your, your eyes fluttered open today, my sleeping beauties. You are loved, you are adored, you are blessed, you are highly favored by the king, you are all queens. Feel free to drop me a voicemail, let me know, give me constructive criticism, ladies, I'm all for it. Let me know if this podcast is helping you, if it's blessing you, helping you in your daily walk with the the precious, precious Lord. Share any ideas, share any ideas that you may have, Uh, we're, we're open to it. And thank you so much for all of your listening support. Please, if you'd like to support the production of more shows like tonight's, feel free. 
you, you know, we can, we, we, we need to spread the hot coals with others. Feel free. If the Holy Ghost is leading you, if our goodly darling one is leading you, support us with a small monthly contribution. Praise God. Praise God. I love each and every one of you. Return soon for another episode. Um, I will continue making those Spanish episodes. You hear me? It is lo voy a hacer. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> Beast mode, baby. Don't forget, ladies, you're loved. You are wonderful. And the king has his eye on you. He's noticed you. He has. You are the apple of his eye. Never forget it. I don't care what that narcissist says to you. Don't you pay attention. Don't you listen to what the serpent says and whispers in your ear. You have the Holy Ghost. You have the power from above. You have been endued, imbued by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Ask Him, as we covered in yesterday's podcast, ask Him to lead you into your King's presence, all you, you, you beautiful Esthers. Ask Him to usher you into His glory and seek Him. Jesus is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Alpha, Omega, beginning and end, first beginning, woo, last, praise God, the source of your wellness, the source of life itself, life abundant evermore. I love you all. Shalom, Salah.